So a bit of a different video for me today. Um, basically, I was I've been into watches for about five years now, and looking uh, around YouTube and the internet and such, it was difficult to find um, a video that had all the information that I wanted in one place. It was all over the place in terms of um, things like the things I would like to discuss. So looking at uh, the size of the watches that you should buy uh, for your wrist, uh, discounts available, value retention, uh, how you're going to use the watch, uh, reasons for buying the watch. Um, so they're the kind of things I'm just going to go over. Uh, and I'll just walk through my watch journey as well. So size of the watch, we'll talk about that first. And by the way, this isn't a particularly magnificent collection. It's just something that I'm starting off in and just finding my way and enjoying it at the moment. So I think the first most important thing is the size of the watch. So from lug to lug, I've worked out that for me, I don't like any more than 50 millimeters lug to lug. Diameter, which is obviously this side to this side, I've worked out for me, I don't like any more than 42 millimeters. Um, from a height point of view, I don't like it to be any more than about 13 uh, millimeters tall. Obviously people's preferences will be different depending on the size of your wrist. I've got a seven inch uh, wrist. I thought I was going to say something else there, didn't you? Um, and it's taken me a while to work out that that's a great size for my preference. Um, I've got a friend who has a smaller wrist than me, but he wears 43, 44, 45 millimetre watches that are 15 millimetres thick. So again, it's all down to preference. The thing that people don't tell you is how different uh, one millimetre in height or two millimetres uh, lug to lug or an extra three millimetres in diameter just one of those dimensions changing by one or two millimetres can drastically change how a watch feels and looks on your wrist. Um, so one of the first mistakes um, I made when buying watches was always try them on first. Make sure you like the size of the watch on your wrist. Another thing just to be aware of and why it's worth trying a watch on is if you have a bezel on a watch, it shrinks the dial. So it might be a 44 millimeter watch, but actually when you try it on, it might wear like a 42 millimeter watch because the bezel takes up quite a lot of um, that space. Whereas for this watch with no bezel, obviously it wears a little bit bigger. So this is a 41 and a half millimeter diameter watch, but actually it probably wears more like a 42, 43 millimeter watch um, just because there's no bezel on it. So there's lots of things to consider when buying a watch beyond the dimensions and you always need to go and try them on. Um, just to be sure that it is comfortable because some watches are very top heavy where they're thick and they um, they kind of slide down your wrist and dig in a bit because just because the height of the case so yes dimensions those three things diameter the lug to lug and the height very important and it took me a little while to, to figure that out and obviously like I say all down to personal taste um, discounts so uh, one of my mistakes buying this watch, I bought this from a um, a mega boutique and I only got 5% discounts. Uh, doing research later, I realised I could have got closer to 15-20%. So that was a mistake. Always check uh, online. If you're happy to go grey, uh, grey dealers, which I have done, I did that for this watch. Um, and I saved about 15% on that watch, I think. Um, just be aware that if you buy from a boutique, you're not likely to get um, the best discounts. You might in some, but it's unlikely. You're probably better off going to independents like Fraser Hart, um, uh, Goldsmiths, etc. That's where you can probably get the good discounts on these watches. So yeah, just be careful when buying them because you will take a hit if you're not careful like I was not. Value retention, right, value retention. For me, it is and it isn't a problem. So that is... That, I think that watch, my Omega, lost, I don't know, four or 500 quid when I left the showroom or the boutique. And it's basically stayed at that value ever since. And that's five years old. So for me, I'm more, I was more than happy to take a hit on that. Uh, same with this one. This one went down about 25% almost straight away, but it stayed at that value. Uh, this one randomly has gone up in price, but that's just the nature of it at the moment. I'm sure that will work itself out as production... Uh, increases and people who want them start getting their hands on them so what am i trying to say value retention i think everyone who's watching this will know that rolex patek uh, certain models steel sports models um go up in value at the moment 
Uh, I personally do believe it is going to um, massively slow down at some point in the next two, three, four years, however long that is, and it will probably correct itself. And I think prices will um, really come down because you're getting steel sports watches up at the same prices as two-tone uh, precious metal watches and such. Um, but this has been covered many times in other channels, um, and I don't really want to go on about it too much. The point I'm trying to make is if you're precious about value retention, you're probably not going to wear the watch very much. Right, because if you buy a Rolex and you're worried about how much it's going to go up in value, you're not going to want to scratch it. You're not going to want to use it, and if you do scratch it, you'll be worried that you're damaging the value. So I don't think watches should be investments. Personally, I think they should be like cars. They should be um, bought and used. Uh, like some people worry about putting too many miles on their car because it's going to lose value. People worry about putting scratches on their watch because it's going to lose value. If you're worried about that, you probably shouldn't be buying that watch in the first place. Um, you really do want to be able to enjoy it. Otherwise, what's the point, right? It's a hobby. So, yes, obviously, you, can't, you shouldn't be looking to lose an absolute fortune, such as JLC watches. You buy those, if you pay retail for those, you, you will lose huge amounts of money on a JLC watch, for example. And there are lots of other examples of high, um, high-end watches out there where you will lose huge amounts of money. Um, what's the one I looked at? Bulgari, Octo, Finissimo. I looked at those for a while. My God, if you buy that retail, you will get absolutely destroyed on the used market. So just go in eyes open, right? Do your research, look at secondhand values, buy some used if you want, um, and just be under, understand that what you're in for if you buy a watch, okay, and what you might lose. So that's enough on that. Um, how are you going to use your watch? This is really important as well. And again, I've made mistakes with this. So I bought this watch for my 30th and to kind of reward myself for uh, a career change that I made. And it was going to be my daily watch and I was going to wear it to work and I do use it a lot. Um, but what I found was it's quite blingy. Um, so I went for the golf edition, but I don't know if you can see it very well, but you can see the green accents. So it's just a little bit of color on it, um, which is what I do like. Um, anyway, it's got quite a lot of high polished areas on the case, on the beveling on the side links and it was getting a bit too much attention plus it was getting scuffed a lot um which is something that was bugging me a little bit so what i did was go and buy this little sucker so this is a longines conquest and as you can see it's got a rubber strap um it's nowhere near as expensive i think it cost me about 900 pounds whereas this one cost me about three and a half ish i think um and because of the rubber strap um, it's perfect for heat when it's really really hot and you get sweaty um, it's got a ceramic bezel, so it doesn't pick up marks. It's got a rubber strap, so again, it doesn't pick up marks. Obviously, the deployment, um, the buckle picks up lots of scratches, but, you know, whatever. This is a watch that fits under the cuff because it is uh, about 11.5 millimetres thick. Um, and it doesn't attract anyone near as much attention as this watch. Um, so really have a think about what you're going to use your watch for. Is it going to be um, a, a daily watch? And therefore, do you want a bracelet? Do you, do you care if you scratch up your bracelet uh, a lot? Or um, are you going to be using it in hot conditions? And therefore, for me personally, I found rubber straps are best for that. I have tried NATO straps as well, but I'm not so sure about those. They get pretty manky and stuff quite quickly. Um, so yeah, have a real think about how you're going to actually use your watch, what you're going to use it for. And that might um, ultimately to tell me what kind of strap you get, what kind of watch you get. Um, obviously, if you're going to go diving, you're going to get a diver. But just the straps, because I did make a mistake, and I'll come on to that again in a second. So I'm going to do my watch journey quite quickly, because I'm conscious this video's uh, rolling on, and just talk you through some of my mistakes I made along the way as well. So I've always liked watches. I've never been able to really afford watches um, until, like I said, about the last five years. I was out in Bista Village with my now wife, and we walked past a tag uh, Hoyer, um, outlet and went inside, looked at a couple of watches, they were massively discounted and I bought an Aqua Racer. Quickly went away, very very happy I thought, um, did some research and realised that actually it's a crap watch. <laughs> um, it, it felt quite cheap when I wound it, it didn't feel particularly good. The crown threaded itself almost instantly. I was able to get a full refund on it um, and I was very happy to have got a refund. So I then continued with my research, up my budget quite considerably and as I said earlier, for my 30th and for changing my career, I bought myself this, which I've now had for five years. This is an Omega Seamaster Aquaterra Golf Edition. Um, I think I said earlier, I've worked out what my key dimensions are, no more than 50 millimetres uh, from the uppermost lug to the lowermost lug. Um, and bear in mind that can change if you've got a fixed end link. 
um, Zara Solid End Link. So this one's about 47 and a half. Uh, it's 41 and a half millimeters in diameter, but it wears a little bit bigger than that because of, as I mentioned earlier, it hasn't got a bezel. And it's about 13.3 millimeters tall, high. So I love this watch. Um, I wear it when I go to weddings, I wear it on weekends. Um, it's got quite a bit of abuse and it probably needs a service now, to be fair, and it needs to be tarted up a little bit. And also my wife threw my iPhone at me. Well, to me, at me. Got a huge scratch, absolutely enormous scar right there, which probably isn't coming up on the camera very well, but you can actually dig your fingernail into it. Anyway, so this watch was the first watch I had. I very quickly realized that it was a bit too blingy for work. So I bought this watch. Doesn't scratch up as much. Again, like I say, this is a Longines Conquest ceramic. You can get it with uh, a bracelet that has ceramic center links, but it looks horrific, uh, for my, in my opinion. So this one's 50 millimeters lug to lug for 11 and a half millimeters thick and 41 millimeters in diameter. It's also um, 300 meters water resistant. I wear it on a holiday. Um, it's what people would call their beater. Um, I wear it when I go go-karting. I wear it when I'm going to theme parks. I wear it in the pool. Um, I wear it to work. It's, it's effectively it was my daily watch for about five years. So after five years, or four, or three and a half, four years, I didn't buy another watch. Um, and then I bought a uh, Tudor Pelagos. So I wanted to have a new daily, I wanted a replacement, I wanted something different. Uh, I wanted a dive watch, so uh, blue dial, uh, titanium case, completely brushed, um, and I thought it would be a fantastic daily. Um, what I didn't realize uh, was how tall the bugger is. It's about 14 and a half, 14.3 millimeters tall. It's 50 millimeters lug to lug and 42 millimeters in diameter. So it's right on the maximum of size of watches I like, but it looked fantastic with a blue dial. The clasp on it is just second to none. Um, I think it's better than the glide lock system that both Rolex uh, and Omega have. Um, but it didn't fit under my cuff because it was too tall. Um, and being titanium and completely brushed, it didn't fit into a lot of situations as I would hoped it would have. So when I go out on dates with my wife or if you go to weddings, it just doesn't quite work. So unfortunately, I did sell that watch. I took quite a big hit on that. I think I lost about 500 quid on that watch. Um, which is very annoying. So I bought the Black Bay 58 as my new uh, daily to replace my long jeans. Uh, I'm sure if you're watching this, you know you all know about Black Bay 58. So it's 47 millimeters from uppermost lug to lowermost lug, 39 millimeters in diameter and 11.9 millimeters thick. Again, I made a mistake. So I bought this originally on the leather, which is brilliant by the way. Gets a lot of grief, but I don't know why it's a very nice strap. Uh, I very quickly realised when it's hot, it's just not appropriate. You get sweaty, it gets manky, it's just not what you want to be dealing with. So I bought the NATO. Um, NATO looks absolutely fantastic on this watch, really like it. It's infinitely adjustable. It doesn't taper, so it makes the watch feel a bit bigger as well. But you have to clean it quite a bit. It gets dead skin in it. It just, it's just, yeah, when you sweat, suntan cream, it's just not pleasant. So luckily, someone on um, one of the watch forums I'm on was selling the bracelet. At a very good price, never used, bought that, and it's now never going to come off uh, the bracelet. I absolutely love it. Uh, my only complaint is lack of a half link, which my Omega has. So what I'm having to do is get a professional watchmaker drill uh, another hole at the bottom of those three, which will give me an extra two millimeters adjustability. And that's literally all it needed. If it had half links, two half links instead of one whole link, it would have been perfect, but they didn't do that. So. Um, for me, that's my watch collecting journey. Uh, it won't stop. I think about every three years I'll buy a watch. Um, for my 40th, which is in five years, four years, I'd like to add a Rolex, um, either BLNR or BLRO. Um, but obviously they're very hard to get, we'll see. I'm not wedded to that idea. I'm also looking at the Vacheron Constantin overseas dual time, but that's obviously very pricey. Uh, and then a Zenith El Primero 1969 with a silver dial. Um, lots of other watches that I like. Um, the original Explorer 2s in the 40 millimeters, the white dials, the Polars. So yeah, my kind of goal is to buy a watch every three to five years, keep the anniversary watches and anything in between is kind of cadden fodder and can be used uh, to purchase other new watches. So like I say, I'm not a YouTuber. I just didn't see another video out there like this answering some of these questions. Um, in one video because they seem to do it over like three or four videos to get views or whatever. Um, 
Obviously, if anyone has any questions about anything, I'm more than happy to try and help, but I'm not an expert or anything. I'm just an enthusiast.